Many of us like to wear strong fragrances, nuclear strength fragrances, in fact. We like our fragrance to get noticed, but we don't always want to wear a strong, obnoxious fragrance that isn't going to be liked by the people around us. We want something that has universal appeal, something that will explode with compliments. I've got seven nuclear strength fragrances that even Oppenheimer would be proud of. I was watching the excellent film Oppenheimer recently. It took me about a week to watch it, but I finally got there. And it occurred to me that Oppenheimer and I have something in common. He likes nuclear bombs. I like nuclear fragrances. So it got me to thinking, if Oppenheimer was to make a fragrance, what sort of fragrance would he make? So essentially, what I'm going to do here is scent Oppenheimer. Not Oppenheimer from history, but Oppenheimer from the movie. Killian Murphy's interpretation of Oppenheimer. These are seven fragrances that he would think were the bomb. So that boy he ain't wearing light blue, he ain't wearing aqua de Gio. He's not even wearing light blue or intense. He's going to rock something that's got some power, that's got some clackers. But unlike the atom bomb, I want to make sure that he wears fragrances that will be liked by people. I'm starting with a fragrance that I've mentioned a lot on this channel. It's one of my favourites from Tom Ford and one of the first super strong nuclear fragrances that I ever wore. This is Tuscan leather. The main components of this one are jasmine sandback, raspberry and leather. This is the sort of fragrance that you've got to shower five times before you've completely washed it off you. I've made the mistake of over spraying this fragrance. I went to meet a friend of mine at the cinema once. I sprayed this all over me, all over my clothes. I even wore Perfume Parlor's oil version of this. I was literally a walking Tuscan leather bomb and I had to get a train to Bradford, meet my friend, watch the film, and all through the film, I was pretty self-conscious that I was smelling extremely strong of Tuscan leather. I mean, I kind of loved it, it's, it's a nice smell, but I was hyper aware that it was a big, big smell. I adore this smell. Fortunately, some women don't adore it, including my wife, she, she told me so. But forget that, that doesn't matter, wives don't matter. I don't understand how anyone can not like this fragrance. Maybe if you overspray it, it, it would become a bit too obnoxious, but I think it is an incredible scent. Don't overspray it, put it on lightly, easy on the trigger, and I think it's one of the sexiest, strongest scents. And if you wear it properly, if you don't overspray it like me, I think you're gonna get some compliments. Don't write Tuscan leather off because of what you've heard people say. Spray less, than you would other fragrances. But if you do, I think less is more, more compliments. Another of my favorite all-time fragrances is part of one of my favorite all-time brands. It's Parfum de Mali, and this one is Carlisle. What an absolute beast. We've got some fruity apple notes. There's osmanthus. There's maybe even a little bit of a tobacco vibe, even though it's not listed. Creamy sandalwood, it's all going on. This fragrance has some killer firepower. Four sprays of this, it's going to last you for two days. Everyone around you is going to notice it. The best thing about this fragrance is you can't really overspray it. It is such a beautiful, smooth, sweet smell. It is the sort of smell that is universally liked by all people, including my wife. I think most people, like 99.9% .9 of people, will enjoy the smell of Carlisle. It's got intense woods, almost the strength of oud without the funkiness of oud. I think it's maybe guyac wood in here, creamy sandalwood, the fruitiness. Oh, it is just, let me have a sniff. Oh, this fragrance is insane. Super easy to wear. It's not challenging. Very, very strong. If you want a nuclear fragrance that is literally going to explode, compliments right in your face, get onto Carlisle. Talked about one of my favorite niche brands with Parfum de Mali. Now I'm going to talk about one of my absolute favorite designer brands. This is one of my favorites from the brand. And I think one of the strongest, although not the strongest, that's coming up. This one is Dior Homme Parfum. It's got that super sexy, lipsticky, makeup-y Dior Homme iris. There's leather giving it a lot of firepower. Rose, creamy sandalwood, and a bit of a nude kicker in the base. We talk about fragrances smelling addictive. I just, I just want to sellotape this to my nose because I just can't stop smelling it. It is incredibly addictive. I love this smell. The Dior Homme Iris is in there throughout the Dior Homme line. That is quite prevalent in many of their fragrances. In this one, it is done masterfully. This is strong. It's 
bolstered with lots of strong notes. Even the rows a little bit jammy in there. There's a hint of booziness, the leather, but it's not a harsh leather. I know oud is listed in this, but I don't really smell much oud. There's definitely nothing funky in here. The oud is maybe just providing some power to the scent. I wore this recently. A friend of mine was here to visit me and he walked into the house. I'd sprayed this, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes prior to him arriving. As soon as he walked in the house, he said, Chris, whatever you're wearing, I want some. I want to wear the same thing. And I, I don't mind him clashing with me. I just enjoy people discovering new fragrances through me. So I said, yeah, sure, no problem. It was this. And he smelt so good for the whole night. His sillage was insane. His scent bubble, it was, it was just a joy to be around him. And I was smelling it off myself as well. So we had this massive Dior en Parfum scent bubble around both of us. We, we must have we must have smelled great together. I love that this is a little bit badass as well. Put this on with a leather jacket. It's got some rose, so you're a badass guy, but you're wearing a fragrance with rose in, so somehow that makes you even more badass because you're confident enough to, to pull off wearing rose in a masculine fragrance. It's classy, it's sophisticated, it's loved by women. They love that metrosexual, sweet, makeup-y, iris smell. Super sexy, badass, nuclear fragrance. Go out there, try it, and there's going to be some explosions. Whilst we're on the subject of Dior, this is one of their interpretations of Sauvage. Now, the original Sauvage, the EDT, strong enough. That is nuclear. An EDT that is that nuclear? I, I don't know how they did that. I've always been impressed with the strength of that. This one is even more powerful. The original Sauvage was a bomb. This one is a nuclear bomb of a fragrance, Sauvage Elixir. We've got some of the original soapy, clean, powdery Sauvage in the background, but there's some spices. This one's darker. The lavender is more dominant in this. It's got a bit of an old school, gentleman's, very masculine cologne type of smell, but mixed in with some really lovely modern elements. This is just a heck of a fragrance. Credit to Dior, they must do their market research because they thought that they would change things up. They've flipped this, they've pivoted from that Sauvage smell and come up with something that is related, but completely its own. It's compliment getting, it's strong, it's too strong if you overspray it, it can get a little grating. I guess, if you spray it too much. So again, as with Tuscan leather, this is one that you definitely shouldn't overspray. Four or five sprays will do the job. It's gonna last ages. Sauvage Elixir was a fantastic release. Dior are a great brand. They know what they're doing and Sauvage Elixir is evidence of that. If you love fragrance as much as I do, head over to my online store, luxparfum.co.uk. You'll find my favorite brands plus brands you can't find anywhere else in the UK. Link is in the description. Aaron Terrence Hughes knows how to make a beast, knows how to make a strong nuclear fragrance. There's a few in his lineup, but I think the strongest one for me is Hard Candy. Interesting notes in this one. There's fruit, lavender, mint, and strawberry. Oh, and not forgetting a bit of ecstasy. Yes, this one has MDMA listed as a note. I don't know if ecstasy has a smell. I've never been around ecstasy, never smelled it. So I don't know if it does smell of anything or not. It, it's a note, so I guess it's not actual ecstasy within the fragrance. It, it's a an accord of ecstasy. There's a lot of firepower in this one. I don't know if it's the MDMA accord that is in here, but this one is big. I don't know what hard candy means. I guess it means when you go into a, a candy shop and you've got soft candies and you've got hard candies, and this one smells a little bit like the hard candies, maybe? I remember talking to Aaron about this and he said he wanted the effect of walking into a sweet shop, into a candy shop, and the smell, the sugary, fruity smell that you get bombarded with when you walk in there. It's youthful, it's energetic, it's lively, it's playful, it reminds you of your childhood, but to contrast that, it's a little bit of a cheeky, naughty fragrance as well. A real mischievous quality to it, but also a childhood innocence. And these two things are just bashing together in the scent. We've got the hard, we've got the candy, but have we got the performance? 
yes, lots of performance. This isn't a big fragrance in terms of it being very leathery or extremely woody. There's oud in here. I'm guessing the oud is helping with the performance. As ever with Aaron's oud, it's a very fruity, rounded, easy to wear oud, nothing strong, nothing funky. It is just providing the scent with a lot of power. So it's not a, a dark fragrance that has a lot of power. It's actually very diffusive. It has some lighter touches. It's sweet, it's all encompassing. The scent bubble of this is massive. The sillage is incredible. It's just got things in it. It's got what I'm presuming are natural ingredients that help this fragrance just go on and on and on in a really fun, lively, playful way. You talk about clubbing scents, you talk about night out scents, you talk about fragrances that are going to get compliments, that are going to get noticed. I don't know that I own any fragrances that will tick all those boxes in quite the same way that Hard Candy does because it's not a designer smell, but it's a very enjoyable smell, it's unique, very likeable, statement making, a little bit naughty, a little bit cheeky, a lot nuclear. One of the strongest, most nuclear fragrances known to man is Interlude Man from Amouage. In fact, there are many Amouage fragrances that are nuclear. This is Interlude 53. Sad story. I've only got a travel sprayer of this and I'm almost out. It's lasted me a while, a couple of years, I think, because it's such a strong fragrance. You don't need to spray much of it, but I will be very sad when this is gone. I think maybe one or two more wearings I've got left in it and then I think I'm gonna have to get myself a bottle. It's actually more likeable and more wearable than the original Interlude Man. That is a little more spiky, a little sharper, maybe the, the Oregano or the Oregano if you're American just has a bit more of a kick to it. This one's smoother, it's just got a much smoother blend, a more likeable composition. Where it doesn't change though is in its strength. This is incredibly strong obviously it fits this nuclear bomb category i wore this literally just this weekend i was at my mum and dad's house i sprayed this in the bedroom i was staying in upstairs quite a long way away from me about 10 seconds after i'd sprayed it my brother-in-law was sitting on the sofa down in the living area he just looked up he knew i'd sprayed something he saw me walking out of the bedroom he said what have you just sprayed that is so strong it filled the room and this is a massive room this is a cavernous room and he said that's an amouage if you want them strong if you want them likable if you want to get noticed for the right reasons interlude 53 is a game changer another brand that is not known for creating weak forgettable fragrances is Nishane. I wish I owned more from this brand because what I've smelled of them, I really enjoy. Now, I almost included Hachivat in this video, which is the oak mossy fruity fragrance. Some people say in the same ballpark as Creed's Aventus. I think it's quite different or certainly it develops quite differently, but that is also pretty nuclear. And it could be the oak moss in that because the one I'm going to talk about also has a base of oak moss. This one is Fanny Flames. Get this for a note breakdown. Rum, coconut, tobacco, oak moss, and more. Goes without saying, super strong, very long lasting, but the incredible thing about this one is how it develops. You spray it on and you get what you might expect somewhat. You get the, the boozy, sweet tobacco scent, all lovely, a bit of creamy coconut in there as well. But what I didn't expect when I first smelled this fragrance is an earthiness that comes along with that boozy, sweet tobacco, creamy coconut opening. And it works. The earthiness seems to beautifully contrast with the sweeter notes in the same way that the earthiness in Amouage's Reflection 45 does. That's just the opening though. The great thing about this is it dries down quite differently. You still get the booziness of the rum and the tobacco in the background, but it dries down to a powdery, kind of barbershoppy type smell, so powdery, herbal. It smells so good, it smells masculine, it's got a little bit of old school, but it's got some sweet modern flourishes as well. There's just loads of great 
complex things. This is a big statement making fragrance that I would love to wear formally if I was dressing up, if I was wearing a nice jacket, a nice shirt, if I want to make a statement and get noticed. Fania Flames from Nishane is going to give you the likability, it's going to give you the strength, the performance. It's going to give you pretty much everything you want out of a fragrance. Incredible fragrance, very strong, nuclear in fact, Oppenheimer would love it. In fact, Oppenheimer would love all these fragrances. If he were a perfumer and not a creator of nuclear devices, he would be very proud to put his name to any of these fragrances. What do you think of my choices here? Do you think they're good fragrances? What would your choice be? Remember, not only has it got to be nuclear, it's also got to explode the compliment. So it's going to be a very likable fragrance. There are loads probably that I could have mentioned. So if you drop those down there in the comments, I would love to hear what you're all wearing and what you're all loving. And if I've not smelled them as ever, I will get out there and get my nose on your recommendations. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a cheeky like, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do all that, I will see you in the next one.